Before we start the video, I wanted to let you guys know about today's sponsor, which is Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app that teaches you all kinds of STEM related concepts, such as algorithm and data structure fundamentals. Best of all, you learn by doing. They use interactivity to bring your understanding to the next level. It's way more fun when you get to work with the material and manipulate it yourself. The problems are perfectly curated to increase difficulty as you go. And if you get stuck, there's always a helpful hint. Brilliant is offering 20% off of an annual subscription to the first 200 people that click the link in the description. So make sure you head down there, click the link, sign up fast before it's too late. And with that said, time to get to the video. What's going on guys? Welcome to another YouTube video. I've been thinking about this recently and I thought about making a YouTube video about it anyway, so here we go. It's been a year since I've joined the company that I work at, my first real dev job, and it's been about a year since I've been practicing and prepping for coding interviews. And like I said, it's been a year, so I wanted to revisit the idea and kind of give my tips on how I would prepare for coding interviews if I were to be moving jobs and or if I were to do it all over again. For those of you who are kind of OG to the channel and know that I stream on Twitch as well, if you guys don't know, I do stream on Twitch, so link will be down in the description below if you guys wanna check out the channel. A year ago, from around today actually, I was prepping for the coding interviews, I was doing a lot of lead code, and talking to Chad and all of you guys in the community of how I could actually prepare for this coding interview, what it is I actually had to do, and what tips and or tricks I could use to just be ready for it. And so today, we're gonna revisit those ideas and I will let you know how I would prepare for those coding interviews if I had to do it all over again and just to overall be ready since I've been thinking about it and I might as well just do it anyways off on the side since I didn't get my CS degree and didn't go to school for it. Also, I just have a gap in my knowledge when it comes to data structures and algorithms, those kinds of questions just because I didn't really necessarily need them when I was coming up and learning front end. But since the industry kind of still uses them uh, depending on where it is and what tier company you're looking for in terms of a startup, mid-tier, or fang kind of company, or ma mang manga, meng company now? Nani? You know, they're gonna ask you different kinds of questions and you just need to be prepared. Whether we like it or not, it's kind of the standard and what companies use right now. So, you know, we just gotta be ready for those technical questions. So let's get straight into it. This is how I would prepare for the coding interview. So first things first, I do want to preface this by saying I have reached out to a couple of my friends who have been prepping for coding interviews and have given me plenty of resources and things to look into when going for this. So the first thing that they recommended and feel free to debate what kind of resources we could use for this. The more resources, the better here. If you don't agree with what I talk about here, feel free to talk about it in the comments and I will reach out to you there. But the one big resource that they told me to use and I had used in the past is Cracking the Coding Interview. This book right here was was highly, highly recommended to me when I was first coming up as a self-taught developer and had been reading it in and out from time to time when I was prepping for it back a year ago. And to supplement with this book, a lot of the practice that they told me to do to put a lot of these concepts into practical use was going on to leak code. A lot of people in the industry know about this website and I genuinely believe that like, literally you should be using this. Um, other alternatives being Hacker Rank, Code Wars, there's plenty of other websites out there, but Leak Code is probably one of the more popular ones out there for you to use to practice technical questions. There's things like Twosome, flipping a 3D array, those kinds of questions. Those are the main ones that you should be, you know, kind of looking at when prepping for coding interviews. They even have a category where you can go to specific companies and look at what kind of questions that they ask. You know, those are like the highly seen questions when going to Amazon interviews. Microsoft Microsoft interviews, now meta interviews, Google interviews, et cetera, et cetera. So you see a lot of those and you can actually go in and practice those before, let's say you have a Google interview coming up, you can go on EliteCode.com and look up what kind of questions that Google asks you so that you can prepare weeks or even the night before. At the same time, when you're doing these lead code questions, I actually recommend that you probably pair up with someone else on this and then try to replicate as much of the interview process as possible. For me, when I was doing these lead code questions on stream, there was a lot of pressure added to 
it, right? You had multiple, up to 40, 60 people watching me code and then try to solve this problem. It's a very, very high stress situation when you have all those eyes looking at you, but in turn, it also helped me kind of deal with that pressure. So that way, when I went into the interview and it was just one person, uh, it just felt easier. It's almost the same way where practice should always be harder in sports than it is with the actual game. So that way, when you go into the game, it feels much, much easier and you're able to slow down. And so I saw that as a direct correlation of streaming my process. And so I think that if you can find somebody, a friend, you can even head into the Discord that I have. The link will also be down in the description for an invite. You've got plenty of people People. We even have a section in Discord where you can reach out and be like, hey, if you want a pair program, if you want to help me through Leak Code, there's a couple of folks in there that would be more than happy to do that with you. Not only does it help you, but it also helps others as well. So I would highly recommend that you do that. Find a buddy to do this with you and just kind of go through it. You can have them act as the interviewer, you be the interviewee, and then you guys can switch back and forth and practice that kind of pressure. Doing it by yourself is great, but then when you add someone else watching you, that's a whole different story. Those two are the big resources as far as the technical. So cracking the coding interview and then leak code. Those are really the two main things. I like to keep this very, very simple. There's a lot of hype and, and just a lot of things that go on that can make things difficult and complex with the coding interview. But those two are the big ones as far as the technical that I recommend. Now, the other big aspect that I feel a lot of people may get intimidated by is going to be the behavioral one. So not the technical, but the, you know, the soft skills, the culture fit type of interviews. From people that I've talked to that have gotten CS degrees or went to boot camps for this, um, not a lot of the time is their emphasis on the soft skills or the behaviorals. And so I will do another shameless plug. The Discord that I have is going to be another great resource for you if you wanna join. I have plenty of folks in there that actually advertise doing mock interviews, both technical and soft skills. So if you are lacking in the soft skill part, I recommend that you, again, find somebody to do this with. It may feel weird at first, but you really just need to get into the patterns and, and get into the space of actually just being in those situations and talking. You know, being on camera, streaming, that has helped me personally so, so much, but it might not be the best method for you. A lot of times talking in front of a camera can be weird, but I actually recommend it. So if you have an iPhone, or if you have a camera, I think making videos, and you don't necessarily have to even post them, talking into the lens like I'm doing right now and, and just talking right? Answering questions, being able to be yourself and not seem super, super nervous in front of a camera or in front of another person can actually help you quite a bit when it comes to the soft skill part. In my opinion, it's just being comfortable. It's being confident uh, on the soft skill part. As long as you can be you, express who you are, in a confident manner and not have as many hiccups, like not too many ums, uh, not too many different pauses, and you can actually be excited about the company or the role that you're applying for during that interview, that's gonna go such a long way. And I've seen huge success in that. Going back and watching my first YouTube videos up until now, I can see the process of me being less nervous, being more comfortable in front of a camera and on stream in front of everybody live has helped me be a lot more comfortable when it comes to one person. It's the same concept as streaming my process on Twitch, doing all my lead code stuff, being in those high pressure situations where a lot of people are watching me and then narrowing it down to just one during the interview makes it so much easier. Like I said, find somebody to help you with this, find somebody to interview you, do a mock, uh, and practice your soft skills because it's not just the technical part of the coding interview that is important. If a hiring manager or people on the team, if you're doing a panel interview, don't see you as a good culture fit and can't see themselves working with you, that's a big letdown and probably going to be a deal breaker there. You could be the smartest person in the room. You can solve that technical question easy peasy. It's not hard. And then you go to the soft skill part and you're just a robot. You don't seem like you would mesh well with other team members. That's going to be a problem. And for me, if I'm interviewing somebody, which I have for our team currently, if I don't see them as a good culture fit or someone who I think can just be fun to work with, I'm, I don't want them on my team. Those are really, really important things to take into account when you're practicing for interviews. And so those are the main things that I would 
practice and look into. If you are looking to practice coding interviews right now and if you're around that area in your journey where you're getting ready to go in. Or if you already have a job and are looking to switch jobs and practice and get back into it, these are the things I would recommend. Pretty self-explanatory, pretty, pretty simple. Don't make it too complex. Don't get too caught up in what if I do this, what if I do that. So hopefully these help you find what it is that you're looking for. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you find that there's better resources than what I've mentioned here, or if you have better methods, feel free to post them down in the comments to help somebody out that has watched this video. And we can just keep talking about it, keep the conversation going because as time moves on, hopefully we can get to a point where lead code questions for front end developers aren't necessarily the way that we kind of triage people. So we'll see, but that's what we got to deal with for right now. Hopefully this helped you guys out and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.